The city is always a feast for an observant little monkey's eyes. And this morning, George was feasting on bold, colorful signs. Ah! Ooh, wow, that's a pretty startling poster, huh? Hi, Steve. I didn't know you worked here. I don't. I just change the posters when the new movies come. And the manager lets me keep the old ones. <laughs> My collection's ah. huge. I bet I hold the most poster record. You want to see it? Come on! <laughs> sure, George. Have fun. <laughs> <laughs> Having a collection's great. My favorite stuff's always around me. <laughs> At that moment, George decided he needed two things. To start his very own collection of his favorite stuff. <laughs> and to stop spinning around. <laughs> All the way home, George tried to decide which of his favorite things to collect. George had a sign Hundley might like. A smart looking dog with a bright red line. Sorry fella, you can't be in here. George's collection was off to a great start. But there was still plenty of room. Pedestrians only! Ah, says who? <laughs> Somehow, the park seemed different. I'm sure the picnic area was this way. No, no, it's that way. Everyone seemed less relaxed. No one is buying ice cream. Officer, where is the picnic area? Just follow the signs. Hey, there should be a sign there. <laughs> so he picked one that looked good. If everyone enjoyed signs the way he did, <laughs> they'd like this one here. <laughs> Wait a minute. If this sign had meaning, maybe all signs did. Right? <sighs> That's what the sign says. This was not the place for canoeing. Hey, it's this way. Honey, we found the picnic tables. Don't feed the bears. It took some thinking, but George figured out which signs went where. All day people keep asking me for ice cream. Is it the white coat? Hmm. Maybe it's this. Who'd put that there? <laughs> that? Well, the sign shop's making a new one. Want to see how they do it? <laughs> we make all our signs. Rectangles to help people find things. A circle for what you can do. And a red slash for what you can't do. <laughs> you want to make a sign? <laughs> it was for his bedroom door. A sign that not only looked good, but was very useful. Yeah. Yeah. 
something was wrong here. Hundley wouldn't ever mess up his lobby. Food made Hundley jumpy. Only one way to find out. George didn't feel any different, so it wasn't the food. <laughs> now he wanted to go back out to play. Was Hundley pretending to be asleep? Or had his mood changed again? George did want to play. But he had to solve the mystery of Hundley. This was too much. Was Hundley sick? No, his nose was cold. He sorted his photos into two groups. Quiet, normal Hundley, and lively, unusual, unhundley. He didn't even know what he was hoping to see. Then, he noticed something. Normal Hundley had a brown collar, but jumpy Hundley had a red collar. Charky jumped around a lot, and she had a red collar, too. George had the solution. Red collars make dogs jump more. <laughs> to test his theory, George put on a red tie. Hmm, he didn't feel different. He couldn't jump higher. Maybe it only worked on dogs. <laughs> Hundley thought he sure was looking good tonight. That explained everything. Hundley was acting like two different dogs because he was two different dogs. Hundley! George? Doxy! I've got you. <laughs> I'll take uh, my poor little Doxy. Oh, yes, 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 she did. This is my sister, Dorothy. Doxy has a way of getting loose. <laughs> Wow, if I didn't see her right there, I'd think that was Hunley wrecking the place. <laughs> George was having so much fun with Doxy. Maybe someday Hundley would meet a monkey he could have fun with too. Give me the food. Oh. Oh. How dare
did those tapers get to our food? I put it in an airtight bag and tied it up in a tree. George meant to put the food back, but he forgot. You know, George, there are worse places to run out of food than the rainforest. See? Ah! And avocados. And coconuts. Oh! Get it? I'm good with monkeys. Be a good little monkey boy. Girl, that's an emperor tamarin. With tamarins, females are always the leader. Sorry, uh, girl. Trade you a banana. Oh! 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 No, my. <laughs> Come back with my camera. Oh, I wish I had gloves. Oh. My movie. Gone. And there's no time to shoot another. You're leaving tomorrow. George felt terrible. He wished there was a way to save Professor Wiseman's movie. If only he could catch the tamarins. <gasps> and then George remembered. He was a monkey too. Nothing could dampen George's determination. And if it did, he shook it off. We're right behind you. Whoa, 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 yeah! But people didn't dry so quickly. George was bigger than the tamarins, so he could cover ground or air more quickly. but he was outnumbered. It was the biggest tree George had ever seen. Could this be the Tamron's home? Maybe now George could get that camera. Monkey. Isn't that sweet, George? They're gathering our food! <laughs> <laughs> oh, here comes my favorite part. Trade you a banana! <laughs> <laughs> Whoa! <laughs> I think they like it. George couldn't wait to watch it again. It was like visiting all his jungle friends right here in the city. We need to do this scientifically. The way I see it, we could have come from three directions. I call them Direction A, 
direction B or from that direction, which I haven't thought of a name for. Now, one of these three roads has to lead home. The question is, which one? Hmm, only one way to find out. <laughs> a car wash, like the one from the truck. My mother told me to... Huh? Ah, oh, now I have to start over. Ah, oh, it's closed. Huh, I guess we couldn't have come this way after all. Just then, Huntley heard a clue. A bell. Huntley's super hearing would lead the way home. Those bumps were something he hadn't felt. Oh. <laughs> they hadn't come from this direction. Cobblestones? Uh -huh. Wait, you guys, George is right. If we came this way, we would have felt those, believe me, but we didn't. Ugh. Uh. That's when Yoki smelled a clue. Fish market. Wait a minute. Pause the music. I remember now. I smelled a strong fishy aroma right about the time I was passing Pluto. <laughs> we must have come down this road. Uh oh. Dead end. We couldn't have come from this direction. Ugh. <laughs> We have no idea where we came from. We'll never find our way home now. And George was out of clues. <laughs> and then he saw it. The ferry. It was splashy and shaky. Oh? And Hundley noticed it dinged like a bell. <laughs> and all around them, Gnocchi smelled fish. <laughs> George realized they must have come over on the ferry. Oh, yeah, that's the ferry. It carries cars from... from the city. That's it. That's the way we must have... Oh, my gosh, it's leaving. Run, run, run. Stop, stop, stop. Look both ways. Okay, all clear. Run. <laughs> Yoki! George needed to do something fast. <laughs> Victory! <laughs> what a team! High five! <laughs> Paw five! <laughs> We're like a team of superheroes with George's eyes, Huntley's ears, Yoki's nose, and my, uh, brain! Nothing can stop us. At last, the ferry docked. They were almost home. Great, we'll be home in no time. Follow me, team. Phew, made it. <laughs> Hi, George. I'm happy to see you, too, and so glad you did what I said and stayed close by. <laughs> well, hi there, boy. <laughs> Hundley! <laughs> Where have you been? Hey, George. Want to play this game now? <laughs> yeah, you're right. Finding our way home was a lot more fun. Hey, let's do it again tomorrow. Maybe you should tell me a little more about your day, George. Fever, stuffy nose, clammy paws. You're definitely fighting a germ, George. Uh? Here you go. See that blob? Huh? That's a germ. Oh. Some germs are good for you, but bad germs can make you sick. <laughs> well, that's your body. Your nose, mouth, stomach. Those are your lungs. Oh. 
when you sneeze or cough, that's your lungs squeezing together and trying to force out the bad germs. <laughs> Enough biology. Time for you to rest. George saw a face. A face he had seen before. <laughs> In the mirror. It was him. <laughs> George's mouth was amazing. It was like a giant cave. A cave with an echo. A squishy floor, which was actually his tongue. And best of all, a spaceship. George was amazed. He didn't know Gnocchi could drive. George knew they were somewhere above his mouth, but where? Fortunately, Gnocchi had discovered a helpful sign. They were in George's nose. Uh -huh. I'm in your nose. Achoo, he's in your nose. I'm in your nose. Oh, yeah, he's in your nose. I'll make you sniff it out and make you sneeze. You won't be smelling that smelly cheese. Down to your belly. Down, down. Mosey, I'm down to your belly. Look out, he's in your belly. So don't eat a thing, that's my suggestion. Cause I'll be giving you an ingestion. <laughs> That was the germ that was making George sick. Well, hey, you're a strange looking germ. Toots is my name. These here singers are the Germets. George explained that he was the owner of this body, and Toots and the Germets would have to go. Go? Why should we go? We like it here. <laughs> I'm making you feel sick? Oh, well, in that case, I'll be on my way. I I'll just uh, get, get my stuff. Ha <laughs> <laughs> ha! Fool you! I'm never leaving! George knew he wouldn't feel better until he got rid of Toots. <laughs> but where did he go? <laughs> the lungs? <laughs> it looked kind of wet. Was this the lungs or was it the stomach? Maybe they made a wrong turn somewhere. Mosey, I'm down to your belly. Look out, he's in your belly. So don't eat a thing, that's my suggestion. Cause I'll be giving... <gasps> <laughs> so where should we go next? Uh, the throat? Hey, maybe the ears. <laughs> hey, 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 what are you doing? You're awake. How do you feel? George felt great. He could even smell again. 
<laughs> you seem much better. <coughs> I wish I could say the same. <laughs> oh, thank you, George. That song was very familiar. Where was it coming from? What's he doing here? Look at that, George. He's so lonely. We have to save him. <laughs> oh, you're right. We should move him to the big lake so he can be with his family. A tooth and I have to take her to the vet. You want to come? Sorry. I'm in the middle of rescuing a fish. Oh, uh, well, I don't think Sally can wait. All right. Well, I'll come back as soon as I can. <laughs> Looks simple enough. Good. Fill your bucket and you can start over there. Where's, where's my bucket? Ooh, ooh. Hi -hi. Hi -hi. Hey. Ooh, ooh, ooh. <laughs> if only there wasn't so much dirt, the fish could swim to the big lake all by himself. Huh. <sighs> all done. Excellent. Hand me the shovel and I'll dig out this and... <laughs> oh, it wouldn't be long now. As soon as the path was finished, the fish could swim back home. He did it. No more fish could get swept through. Oh. If George was willing to sit there for the rest of his life. George needed something to stop that water fast. watertight gates on each end. This is the big lake, and this is the small pond. You pull up the gate on one end, and the water in the middle goes to that level. Huh. At least one gate is always closed, so the water in the middle stays where you want it. <gasps> no matter how exciting he made it look, the fish wouldn't go. Maybe fish like cheese sandwiches as much as little monkeys. <laughs> oh, well, you uh, already ate your lunch, huh? No, I... I... Uh, when did I eat my lunch? Yeah. Say, did you, uh, take the paddles? Huh. I always leave them on the seat. I... I don't know. Listen, something very peculiar is going on around here. You're telling me. Believe me, I am normally a very organized and unforgetful <laughs> man. I... <laughs> oh, I should have known. Looks like I'm the forgetful one. I forgot how much mischief a monkey can make. <laughs> well, what have we here? It looks like a fish canal. You are some smart monkey. 
George had saved five fish. Wow, that's great, George. Wait, the lonely fish is still there. Ah! <laughs> job, everyone. Well, we've accomplished quite a bit today. A fish rescue and a dock repair. Only one thing left to do. Go swimming! Last one in is a rock fishing! George was really hungry. But his order only had a measly one on it. Huh. Huh? Then he remembered what the man with the yellow hat had told him about zeros. <laughs> George! Good to see ya. Oh, is that an order for your friend with the yellow hair? <laughs> One hundred dozen? Oh, our biggest order ever! Oh, he must be having a giant donut party! George realized what his zeros had done. <laughs> but try explaining that to a dog. <laughs> Okay, now, where did I leave that piece of paper? I misread the order. It's one thousand dozen. Oh, this is the biggest day in the entire history of donuts. We'll have to have more donuts flown in from other towns. Oh. <laughs> Let's see, there's five dozen, ten, fifteen dozen. Hmm, my mistake. It's one hundred. This was still more donuts than one little monkey could ever eat. Or maybe not. Ninety-nine, oh, one hundred. Oh, you can't carry it all. Kids, we have a delivery! Ooh. <laughs> George could only think of one solution to a problem this big. So, George headed home with one dozen donuts, and everything was perfect. <laughs> Wait! I don't have your address! <laughs> he must be late. Mmm, <laughs> wow, those smell so good. I'm sorry I didn't ask you to buy more than one dozen. <laughs> you look hungry, George. I'll make eggs, then it's donut time. It's a little dark in here. I'll open some curtains. So, anything exciting happened today, George? <laughs> I passed by the D family. They look pretty happy. Did you put that donut there? <laughs> oh, what a waste of food. Now we only have 11 to eat. Here's the... Say, where'd they all go? A... Uh, what? A hundred dozen donuts. A hundred do... We have one dozen donuts? Look. 
<laughs> well, Miss Donuts asked me to give you the bill. Wow, what a mistake. How could they think you bought a hundred dozen don't... What? <sighs> well, at least I know you were paying attention. We've got to put these donuts in bags or something. <laughs> Oh, what are we going to do with them all? <laughs> so in the end, George got one dozen donuts, like he was supposed to. And the hard-working firefighters thought everything was perfect. How many left, George? rug made for good toe squishing. So it would probably be fun to jump on. George had to get that juice off the rug. Soap. Soap clean stuff. Bubble bath would make it smell good. but there was something missing. <laughs> George had to get all those suds out of the house so he could see if the rug was clean. George was happy he spotted the glass of juice. That could have caused a real mess. Grape juice must help you think, because George suddenly remembered when the Rinkins' basement flooded. This is when good watch pigs go get their farmer. They needed a gate opener pig. How could such a little monkey move a big, heavy pump? George could use a bike to move the pump. Even with wheels, George needed help to pull it all the way back to the house. The goat sure liked to pull. He was the perfect choice. Or maybe the pigs would do it. But when he opened the gate, they ran to do their watch pig duties and get their farmer. Wasn't there anybody who'd help? The chicks were willing. But the cow was a lot stronger. <laughs> what is it, something wrong? You know, I think they're trying to tell us something. They're trying to tell us all the pigs are loose. Get them! <laughs> That cow was so good at towing a pump that it went right past her. <laughs> the 
Before long, he'd pumped all the water out of the house. George, I'm home. Wow, that new rug makes the whole room look cleaner. George, come see what I bought. George? George knew the room was still a little squishy. But he had the feeling there was something else he forgot. Whatever he forgot, he knew he was going to hear about it soon enough.